Good afternoon, everyone. There are now unconfirmed reports that as many as 80 people have died in that bomb explosion at a federal building in downtown Oklahoma City. The rescue workers continue to try to recover the bodies that are trapped in the rubble. I just started saying, you know, my name is Amy. Tell my husband and family I love them. I mean, because I'm thinking this is it. I'm going to say goodbye. It was at this moment that I realized I had not been living my life because all of the sudden my life is over. My name is Amy Downs and I'm a survivor of the 1995 Oklahoma City bombing. A massive car bomb shatters a federal building in Oklahoma City. Hundreds still are missing terrorism in mid-America. As we go to our, our, our people that are alive. I remember going to work that morning and it was beautiful and I remember it was just a normal day you know I I went up to work so I was showing pictures of my new house to all my friends and talking with them it got close to nine o'clock and I thought okay I really should get some work done and I sat down a friend of mine a co-worker came and sat down beside me she was seven months pregnant she needed to ask me a question I was kind of shuffling some paperwork and getting ready to ask her what she needed and finally kind of turned to say, hey, what do you need? And that's when the bomb happened. Is there anybody on the upper floor that may have survived? It felt literally like maybe my head was exploding. I remember thinking, did someone just walk in and shoot me in the back of the head? I could hear people screaming all around me. And this one woman was just screaming right in my ear, Jesus, help me. And then I realized that was my voice. I just didn't even recognize the sound of my voice own voice, I was just so terrified. I remember thinking, you know, literally thinking, I, th I think I've died. About the time they find my hand and they're trying to start moving things around, I hear another man in the background and this man is yelling, everybody out, everybody out. There's another bomb. Let's go, let's go, everybody out. Got one more bomb. Let's get out of here. And around. so my rescuers are talking over this person saying, Amy, we just need to get some more hydraulic equipment. We're going to be right back. We just need to get some more equipment. But I could hear, I knew, and they left and I was alone. All of a sudden I realized what really mattered in life wasn't what I thought mattered. I just started um, just begging God, you know, just, I, I will live my life different. If I could just have a second chance, you know, if I make it out alive, I will not live my life the same. say FBI agents have questioned them about three men who stayed there. The so they took me out in the back of the federal building and I remember looking up at the sky and it had been so beautiful that morning before and now it was cold and dark, raining, it looked like the middle of winter. But I will never forget looking at that sky, taking that first breath of fresh air and just filling my lungs and saying, God, I will never live my life the same. There is a story with a happy ending this morning in Oklahoma City, the story of Amy Petty trapped for five hours in the rubble of the Murrah building before finally being rescued. This morning she's at Presbyterian Hospital in Oklahoma City. How are you feeling? <laughs> Sore, but very fortunate to be alive. What are doctors telling you about your condition? Um, I'm just going to be sore and I have a, a large cut on my leg, but I'll be fine. What do you remember about 18 of my 33 co-workers were killed, including Robin, who is seven months pregnant, who is sitting right next to me. It was a very dark few years. I would love to say that it was this, you know, the bombing happened on April 19th and April 20th, this new Amy emerged and, you know, everything was great. And it wasn't. I mean, it took quite a few years just to work through the pain of losing all these people and the survivor guilt. The second day in the hospital is I'm finding out that um, 
you know, they're not getting any other survivors out and that most of my coworkers have died. I found out that one of my coworkers that I was good friends with was actually in the hospital on the same floor as me. And our families figured out we were across the hall from each other. So they wheeled Terry's bed into my hospital room. And I will never forget, I just remember they wheeled her in and they put her right beside me. And we just reached out and held hands and we just held on to each other. And we have ever since. To have her, to know how you feel, and it is just the slightest of things that you think, why do I cry at the drop of a hat? Why am I so grouchy? And it dawns on you. And so then I'll send Amy a text, you know, today is a really bad day. And um, I did that this year. And she said, oh my gosh, I thought it was just me. And I know it's not just me. And so then you know that you're not crazy, that it's just something that sneaks up and happens to you. I mean, the bombing is a part of me, it will always be a part of me, but it isn't who I am. And I choose to live life that if it was over tomorrow, I'd be okay. Life is good. Life is really, really good, and it's what you make it. I really believe that. I really do. It's been 23 years since the bombing, and everything in my life has changed. I went from being a teller at the credit union where I worked to being the CEO. I went from being 355 pounds to an Iron Man. I went from being unhappy and divorced to being extremely happy and in love. I went from thinking I never wanted to have children to being the mom of the most incredible 18-year-old drummer there is. I went from living my life without purpose to living my life with faith and intention. To that person that is going through something so horrible and they wake up every morning and they think, I can't believe this happened. When is my life gonna be normal? When? There will be a new normal. I promise you, you will make it out. You will make it through the other side. It takes some hard work. Purpose yourself every day to do your best to get through it. Try to look for the positives wherever you can find them. Time does really heal and you really will get through it. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.